I'd like to share with you an awesome self-curing clay that lets me create detailed sculptures or fix or alter figurines without shrinking. No kiln or oven needed. Welcome, this is Millipa and I'll share with you the joy of this clay-like material as I sculpt animals while sharing my tips, tricks, and color comparisons I've learned through the years. I also share my thoughts on how I think Milliput compares with other brands. I've purchased these Milliputs myself and I'm just sharing my two cents based on my own hobby projects. I'm making this video in the hopes it will answer a lot of the questions I get asked. To use Milliput Epoxy Putty, just grab equal bits from each stick and squish them together in your gloved hands for 5 minutes until they become one color. One stick is resin, the other is hardener. When mixed, they form epoxy putty. I like to fold, roll, and fold again to make sure it's well mixed, like I'm an artisanal bread maker with tiny dough. <laughs> I use a small blade to cut and measure equal amounts easily. I've had success just eyeballing it, though if I'm not sure, I use a little more of the hardener. That mixing ratio has always cured well for me, though I found it cures faster than the even mix, so keep that in mind. Once you begin mixing the two parts, the chemistry action that causes the curing begins. Within 30 to 60 minutes, you'll notice it slowly hardening as you work with it. The box recommends always wearing gloves, and I wear tightly fitting nitrile gloves throughout the entire mixing and sculpting process. Milliput is also sticky, so wearing gloves keeps your hands nice and clean. Now for my favorite part, sculpting. You can use your gloved fingers or tools to make the putty look smooth or textured. Honestly, your hands are your best tools. You can also carve, scrape, or stamp the putty to make it look more detailed and interesting. In addition to my hands, I like to use different tools like a toothpick, rubber clay shapers, old paint brushes, wax carving tools, and ribbon tools to help me shape, remove, or detail the clay. Using water helps me keep the putty from sticking to my gloves or sticking to my tools and helps to clean up. It helps smooth the putty too. I only use a little at a time as too much will wash out fine details. There's a little bit of a learning curve here. It's tricky getting used to smoothing while wearing gloves, though I found that using a lint-free blue shop towel with water easily gets the smoothest results. I can sculpt an entire creation from Milliput, or use it to stick to other materials like plastic, metal, or wood. If I want it to stick to a smooth surface, I roughen the surface first so the Milliput can stick better. Speaking of sticking to things, Milliput works well on a sculpture armature. I make mine with steel wire from the hardware store and aluminum foil. This helps reduce material costs, keeps the putty from sagging and warping, reduces chances of cracks, and strengthens freestanding sculptures. Also, if you're enjoying this, you can find more of my Millipet projects on my channel, as well as videos about making horses and other animals and all sorts of clay, painting, and printmaking projects. Depending on how warm or cold your room is, the putty will start to harden after 30 to 60 minutes. Rock hard cure happens in 3 to 4 hours. <laughs> I rarely complete a sculpture in 30 minutes myself, so I often work in small sections at a time, creating my sculptures over many days. I'm almost never fast enough even then, and always have these leftover balls of putty. Sometimes I draw faces on them because that's my sense of humor. <laughs> I often wait 12 hours before carving, drilling, sanding, or painting to get the best results. Mixing bigger batches cures faster, and adding additional warmth helps cure it even faster. If you need more working time, mix smaller amounts and roll it out into thin noodles to reduce the mass. Less mass equals slower curing. I find it best to clean your tools and workspaces immediately. Trust me, I know what a pain it can be to clean up cured epoxy putty from any brand. Just ask my poor clay shapers or my old paint brushes. A little water is all you need if you clean right away, nothing fancy. When you're done, make sure to wrap up and seal the two parts and store the box in a cool, dry, dark place. If not stored well, or if stored for many years, you may find it starts to harden and the blue part oozes this yellowy oil. 
I found that if I catch it fast enough in my own putties, I can use a solvent like mineral spirits to clean up and soften the putties, which buys me more time before I have to, well, buy more putty. My previous experience with Aves Epoxy Putty taught me that there's a difference in workability between the colors of Aves, and that was one of my first questions when I started with Milliput. There is also a difference with the Milliput colors, though not quite as broad as it is in Aves. It's a smaller difference. First off, the overall consistency. In general, Milliput is one of the softest epoxy putties I've tried so far. I've heard people compare it to Plastilina, and now that I'm sculpting with Plastilina too, I'd say that's fair. I found Terracotta is the firmest of all the Milliput colors, <laughs> for a mean relative. It's not nearly as firm as Nidatite or Green Stuff or Aves Epoxy Putty in the natural color, which are all pretty firm. Rather, it's a little more comparable to Magic Sculpt in the natural color. If you've used Plastilina clays, I say it's going to feel like a soft Plastilina. Every color after Terracotta just gets softer, with white and silver gray being the softest. If you're used to Magic Sculpt or Aves, these colors will feel very soft. Also, freshness matters. Recently manufactured clays I find are softer, and the clays get stiffer with age. If you find yourself in that position, you can use the previously mentioned tip of softening it up with a solvent to get a little more life out of it. I found all colors are a little tacky and messy. They're not as strong of a sticky as green stuff though. More like plastilina in that regards, and this is how I think they rank on both tackiness and the residue they leave behind. Did I mention wearing gloves? I also found the ease of detailing parallel consistency, in that I found the firmer colors were easier to detail, though there are a couple of important notes. There's a learning curve to white and silver gray, as it's easy to use too much water and lose detail in those colors. Though, once you figure it out, those colors can hold the most delicate of details. Basically, it's all about learning not to use too much water if you want detail. If you do want it to self-level and smooth out, then douse away. That's actually something Milliput does really well and I've come to appreciate it, especially when I want smooth putty in hard to reach areas. And finally, both the black and turquoise colors have these little grains of color. In the turquoise, it helps the putty look like real turquoise. In both colors, I found those little grains can make it hard to get fine details on really small scales. So if your creations are tiny like mine, you might want to try the other colors. I found that pretty much all brands of epoxy putties I've used are very durable for my purposes of creating detailed sculptures that see light handling and transportation. And I've come to learn there are two kinds of putty, rigid and flexible. Milliput, like Aves and Magic Sculpt, are rigid putties, and Green Stuff is a flexible putty. When put under a lot of pressure, flexible putties tend to bend instead of snapping. In the case of extra delicate details like gears, I found it helpful to use a trick I learned of mixing these two types of putties for added durability. Mix Milliput with cream stuff or Nidatite and bam, you've got yourself a power couple. I've experimented with mixing equal amounts of green stuff to Milliput, as well as varying the ratios, and found they all worked really well for my sculptures. It just depends on how much rigidity you'd like to retain. All colors blend onto previous layers of Milliput well if you find you're like me and working in layers. However, this changes if you're using Milliput to modify a pre-existing object like a plastic figurine or model. Especially on plastic, I found some colors easier or harder to blend and create a seamless transition. 
Terracotta and standard yellow gray were the easiest to blend onto plastic and, after curing, only needed a little sanding to completely blend. I found white and silver gray needed more sanding. If your experience is with Aves or Magic Sculpt, this is going to take a little getting used to as I found those two brands blend by hand with a little less effort and less sanding. Though, we're talking the difference of a few minutes of work plus or minus, so keep that in mind. And it really comes down to your personal preference and how fast you want to work. Speaking of unique properties of the different Millipet colors, it's possible to mix them together to create your own shades or create different consistencies. For example, I love to mix terracotta and white together as I find I get some firm consistency from the terracotta and gain some finer detail from the white. It's like I get the best of both. It's also possible to add dry pigments to Milliput for custom color combos. It's easiest with the white Milliput, though interesting results are possible with the other Milliput colors too, so experiment. This works best with artist grade dry pigments, mica powder, or carefully shaved and ground dry pastel sticks. If you're working at small scales like I am, it's helpful to have the finest grind of particles so they are small and not getting in your way as you sculpt tiny details. I make sure to use only non-toxic pigments for this and wear a dust mask in a well-ventilated space when mixing my own pigments into Milliput. I recommend starting with small amounts and mixing thoroughly, then adding more until you get the perfect color and consistency. Speaking of consistency, adding dry pigments will create a stiffer putty, so if you feel Milliput is too soft, this may be a perfect hack for you. Speaking of putting Milliput on plastic, I found Milliput is really great for sculpting new details or rebuilding entire parts on existing models. It's non-shrinking, making it great for alterations or repairs as it shouldn't peel away from rigid surfaces when properly mixed and applied. In fact, making anatomical changes to manufactured model horses made from plastic is how I got started with Milliput. Surface prep is the biggest challenge with customizing as really good surface abrasion improves adhesion and helps Milliput to stick best to smooth materials like plastic, resin, or pewter. I use a combination of sandpaper, sanding sponges, needle files, or a needle pointed tool to get all kinds of rough surfacing, and I clean and dry it before adding the putty. Cleaning removes any loose particles or oils that might prevent adhesion. Milliput also works really well for filling seam gaps, resin pinholes, and 3D print lines. And if you're finding this helpful so far, I'd love to hear it, or you could give that like button a little boop. I've even used it to make repairs in my own mold making and resin casting projects when my mold leaked. Subtractive sculpture methods are a large part of my own process, especially drilling and carving, and I'm happy to say I found all the colors of Milliput carve nicely. A secret trick to subtractive sculpting, a variable speed rotary drill with small bits, like these sanding drums, and these diamond coated bits are my favorites for working with Milliput. Needle files work pretty well too, are budget friendly, and are some of my favorites. Sanding, drilling, and carving Milliput will create fine dust and possibly chips, so I always make sure to wear the proper mask and goggles while working either outside or in a well ventilated area. I found the most success painting my Milliput creations with a little sanding and a coat of primer. A little goes a long way, and a thin coat is all that's needed to give some tooth for the paint to grip without losing details on small sculptures. Automotive primers and spray cans are working pretty well for me, so I recommend you experiment to find the type of product and the brand that works best for you. I always make sure to wear the proper respiratory and eye protection and work in a well-ventilated area when priming. And now we're ready to paint. 
After the primer is cured, you can paint Milliput with almost any type of paint that you prefer, such as acrylic, enamel, or oil paints. For example, I love to paint mine with airbrushed and hand-painted acrylics underneath hand-painted oils. You're likely to have the best results with paints that adhere well to smooth surfaces, so check your product info when shopping for paints that work best for you. You can also use markers, pens, or pencils to add details or effects. You can apply the paint with a soft brush, a spray can, an airbrush, or a sponge. It's personal preference, really. After the paint has cured, you can apply a top coat sealer or a varnish to seal and protect the paint for years to come and to give it a delicious matte satin or glossy finish. If you want to see more about painting Milliput, you can check out my old copy project. By the way, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Since this was info heavy, let me quickly summarize your key takeaways so you can get started right away. Always wear gloves and have something like water to help smooth and keep your tools clean. The best tools are your own fingers and whatever you have nearby. Be sure to mix equal amounts of each stick and mix for 5 minutes for best results. If sculpting onto smooth surfaces, rough up the surface first. While generally all soft, the colors make a little difference. If you want the slightly firmer version for easier details or because you are used to other brands, start with terracotta. If you want something in between that can do almost anything, get the standard yellow gray. If you need added durability for delicate parts, mix in a rubbery epoxy putty like Nidatite or green stuff. Also, armatures add strength and prevent sagging or cracking. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one. And with that, I'll thank you so much for watching. Bye!